This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about a problem we had on our exam number two in solids, CE 3302. It was a beam loaded like this, and we're supposed to solve for the reactions and the shear and moment at a certain point, and then get the bending stress and the transverse shear stress. So we're viewing, this is a composite of sort of all three tests, versions. We have 15 kip foot concentrated force couple moment at this end, five kips per foot distributed load between points B and D, and then eight kips at this cantilevered overhang end at point E. Uh, the dimensions are five foot, 12 foot is the span between B and D. That's a nine foot to this point C that we're going to look at later on. And then five foot is the overhang at the uh, right end. So first thing to do is solve for the reactions at B and D. <clears throat> By inspection, there is no horizontal load, so there's no reaction at this pin. This is a pin at B, and it's a roller at D. Let's sum moments about point D first. And that's equal to zero, we've seen counterclockwise positive. So I have a counterclockwise positive 15 kip foot at this end, minus BY times its 12 foot distance to point D, plus five kips per foot times 12 feet times its moment arm of six feet, half its distance, and that is um, also counterclockwise about point D and then at this end I have 8 kips times 5 feet which is clockwise so it's negative about point D. I combine some terms move the 12 BY to the other side of the equal sign I get 15 plus 60 times 6 which is the 5 times 12 is 60 <coughs> minus 40 which is just 8 times 5 I combine some more and divide by this 12, it was in front of BY, and so I get 375 minus 40, or 335, divided by 12, is 27.9, 27.92 kips up. Sum and forces in the Y direction, 0, positive is up, I have 27.92 from BY, note that this is a couple moment, it doesn't do anything for the forces in the any y or x direction. So I have 27.92 up from by minus 5 kips per foot times 12 feet plus dy, the unknown, minus this 8 kips out here at the end. So I get dy is equal to take all these other things to the other side of the equal sign, negative 27.92 plus 60, 5 times 12, plus 8 is equal to 40.08 kips up. I look real quickly at what I have is 5 times 12 is 60 plus 8. I have 68 kips. That's the sum of these two reactions. Okay, now I want to have a shear and moment diagram. So I've drawn these below and in line with everything. And uh, first thing I want to do is note that from point A to point B I have no shear so my shear diagram looks like this just going along at zero then in line with my rules the shear jumps up by a concentrated force which is this reaction of BY 27.92 jumps up to that amount then it starts declining remember that the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the value of the loading diagram. So I have a 5 kips per foot, so it starts declining at 5 kips per foot from 27.92 down to all the way at this point over here. I want to know where that point is where it crosses 0, and so I just divide 27.92 by 5 to get 5.58 feet out from point B. 
that's an important point that I need to know for my moment diagram and other things. Okay, <clears throat> how much does it decline from 2792? It declines by the total of the, the change in the shear diagram is equal to the area under the loading diagram. So between those two points, it's 5 times 12 or 60. So I get that point by subtracting from 2792, my starting point, 5 times 12 or 60. So I get to negative 32.1 at point D. And so I've drawn that here. Note that this is a one degree curve. It's a function of X. This one is a zero degree curve and then I'm going to this next one is a zero degree curve also, a constant. Okay, I'm at negative 32.1. I'm gonna, I've got a concentrated load coming from my reaction at D, 40.08, 40.1 essentially. So it jumps up 40.08 08 from negative 32.1 takes me to 8 kips. Then there's no load between there and the end of the overhang cantilever, at which point I have an 8 kip downward, so it jumps back down from 8 to 0. And so that's my shear diagram. I'm going to need some values off of that to get my moment diagram. But let's start off here at the uh, at the left end. At the left end I have this concentrated force couple, 15 kip feet, and note that that's uh, counterclockwise on the left end of a beam means it causes cupping on the bottom so it's a negative moment. Remember from our sign conventions that uh, on the left end of a beam positive moment is causing rotation up and causing cupping on the top. So this is a negative moment. So I start off at negative 15. Nothing happening between A and B moment wise either. So I go over to point B at negative 15. I'm at a zero degree, a constant curve or no curve at all. At negative 15 at point B, then I start to get some loads that cause some moment or some change in the moment. So I know that the change in the moment diagram for many two points is the area under the shear diagram. So I want to know what the area of triangle one on the shear diagram is and I've written it out here. It's one half because it's a triangle, 27.92 its height, 5.58 feet its base, so it's 77.94. So I've written here my moment at the vertex is negative 15, my starting point, plus 77.94 is 62.94. That's the vertex. That's the moment at the vertex. Okay, now let's also look at this real quickly. The slope of the moment diagrams, the value of the shear diagram. So I start off with a positive slope but it's decreasing, so my slope is positive, but it's getting less and less. At the vertex, my slope is zero. Then I start having negative slope because my shear value is negative, so it starts curving over and down, negative slope, and it's increasing in its, magn in its value of its slope. So it curves down to a point that I want to know what it is. I can kind of cheat and look at it from the other side, but let's look at it from this direction. I want to know the area of triangle 2. That's equal to 1 half the height of the triangle, 32.1, times the length of the, the base of the triangle, which is this distance, 12 minus 5.58, or 6.42. So that area of that triangle 2 is 102.9. I subtract that from 62.94, got a slight rounding error there. That takes me to 62.94 minus 102.9 is negative 40 kip feet. That makes me happy because I see the area under my shear diagram from point D to the end of the beam, point E, is 8 kips 
times 5 feet, that's 40 kip feet. That takes me back to 0, which is correct. So note that I have a 2 degree curve there. I should have written in that that's the vertex at 62.94. I should count off a point or two there. And uh, then I have a 1 degree curve sloping back up from negative 40 to 0. So that's my moment diagram. Now I want to know my shear and my moment at point C, which is 3 feet to the left of point D, as shown on the loading diagram. So there's different ways to do it, too, in particular. You can cut a section. Actually, you can cut a section from either end. I've cut a, sec cut a section from the point C to the, and taken everything to the right. So here's what I have. I have my point C and I've drawn in my assumed moments, moment and shear at that point, assuming positive directions. And then I've got a distributed load of 5 kips per foot for that 3 feet over to point D, where I have my reaction, 40.1 kips up. 5 feet over, nothing happens until I get to the end where I have 8 kips down at the end of the overhang cantilever. So first thing to do is sum forces in the Y at point C. That's equal to 0. Assume positive up is V minus 5 times 3, the 5 kips per foot times 3, plus the reaction at D, 40.1, minus 8. Combining all those terms, I get that V is equal to negative 17.1 kips. I can also do that by get looking at my shear diagram. And I know that at this point, I'm at 32.1. I want to know what the shear is three feet to the left of, to the left of that point. And so the change in the shear is the area under the loading diagram. So 3 feet times 5 kips per foot is 15. So I say I'm at negative 32.1 and I want to add back 5 times 3 or 17.1. I get the same answer for the shear at C. Look in the moment at C. I want to sum moments about that point C. Counterclockwise positive. I have my um, counterclockwise positive means that the mo moment I've assumed there is negative because it's clockwise. Minus 5 kips per foot times 3 foot distance is 15 feet to 15 kips times its moment arm of half of 3 or 1.5 feet. Plus my reaction 40.1 times the 3 foot moment arm. That's counterclockwise so it's positive minus my 8 kips out at the end of the overhang times 3 plus 5 or 8 feet it's clockwise so it's a negative moment. I combine all my terms my moment is equal to negative 15 times 1.5 plus 120.3 which is this term 8 times 8 64 is equal to 33.8 kip feet positive by my sign assumption. So Look at that point on the moment diagram, looks about right, but I want to confirm it. So the change in the moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram. So I started out at 62.94 at the vertex, and which is right here, and I go over by the, I decrease it by the area on the shear diagram, which is from that point over a distance. I want to go over to a point three feet to the left of D. So that's 6.42 feet from the vertex to point D. So the distance to point C is 6.42 minus 3. And it's a half because it's a triangle. And it's um, the value of the shear at that point. I've already calculated two ways. Here is 17.1. So I get a slight rounding error, but I get 33.7 kip feet at that point which confirms my 33.8 that I got from the section. So there I've got my shear and my moment at that point. Now the last two things I need to do is the bending moment and the transverse shear stress. I'm given that my section is 8 by 18. It's a beam. Okay, I need my moment of inertia. 
bh cubed over 12 is 8 times 18 cubed over 12 is 38.88 inches to the fourth. My bending stress in general is, and I've left off my negative sign, but uh, the uh, magnitude of it is the moment times the y bar distance from the neutral axis up to any point divided by i. My maximum bending stress is at the moment times my extreme fiber distance, called C, which is the distance from the neutral axis up to the extreme fiber, which is the top of the beam, divided by I. So that value is 33.8 is my moment. That's kip feet. Then I got to multiply by 12 to get it into inch, kip inches, and then times my C distance, which is 9, divided by I. 38, 88 inches to the fourth, I get 0.938 KSI. I check my units, make sure that everything was good. I got kip feet, kip inches, kip inches squared, divided by inches to the fourth, so I get KSI. Lastly, I need my transverse shear stress, and so we know that's going to occur at the neutral axis. And so I need my Q, my Q max at the neutral axis is the area above the neutral axis, the point where I'm taking the shear stress, times the distance from its centroid to the neutral axis, which is half of that 9 inch height, 4.5 inches. So Q is equal to 9 times 8, 72 inches, times my Y bar distance, 4.5 is 324 inches cubed. Now I've got everything I need. My maximum shear, transverse shear stress is VQ over IT. V, the shear is 17.1 kips. Q is 324 inches cubed. I is 3888 inches fourth. And the thickness over which the shear is, is applied is 8 inches, the width of the beam. That comes out to be 0.178 KSI.